I am just obsessed with the book series, and um, yeah, I'll have other ideas, but I write them down and I put them aside because my one focus, my only goal right now is to get out the book I'm writing. And yeah, there's I've run across lots of writers that I know one guy in my uh, local writers group. He's started 20 books. He hasn't finished any of them, but he started them. Um, he is exactly, he said he was about 20 to 10% completed on all of them. And it's, uh, I, I look, I, I, t I try to tell people it's like when you're downloading files, you know, you're, if you try to download 10 files at once, they're all going to take a long time to download. But if you download one file at a time, it'll get done much quicker. So it's, you know, if you're almost like downloading a television series, if you try to download all the episodes at once, you're going to be waiting around at once. So at least you can download the first one, watch that, and then the other one's downloading it by the time, you know, that way you can watch the whole thing as it, as it goes. So um, it's just about discipline, I guess, you know, just focusing as much as you can on what you're writing. And if you get stuck, like if uh, writer's block, for example, um, it hits me too, you know, um, but what I do is I go through and reread um, stuff I've already written. And, or I might start on another chapter that I feel a little bit better about. And um, I find that really helps because the next thing you know, hey, um, writer's block, writer's block, ah, ah, I can't talk today. Anyway, it's gone and I can move forward. Two things that work for me is I have a, a variety of dry erase boards, small ones, and I call those my battle boards. And on them, I just write down every project that I've got that's currently being worked on. And like Nicholas talked about, don't have a zero day. A little bit every day and you will move mountains. It's, it's really that simple. I try not to work until it's no longer fun. Sometimes you have to push, but save the days that you have to push on your craft so hard. Because when you turn against it, when you hate that you have to do something creative, it becomes the job that you've left. It becomes this nightmare that you don't want. Work until it's no longer fun. And probably the other thing is, part of you has got to be this boss of yourself, a drill sergeant version of yourself that won't listen to your crap, that won't compromise with you, that makes you move forward. And, you know, try to summon that person a little bit each day, too, to help you get through. I hate yourself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, caffeine, high fructose corn syrup, and sunlight. I used to have really good ninja focus, then YouTube happened. And I'll try to write, and then I want to look up Pokemon videos. So that's kind of been a challenge, just growing up with technology. But... I mean, I used to try to have a deadline for myself because I'm a very strict, organized person, and that was just stressing me out. So, again, don't have a zero day. I have a publisher, so mine's a little bit different. I do kind of have a zero day. But if I'm getting stressed, you know, she's really good saying take a break. You know, just go back over a chapter you want to do. I'm very odd. I write in order, in sequence order. I don't know if you do that. Yeah. Okay, because a lot of authors don't. And other authors, they're like, you no, you're supposed to write what you want to write that day and then put it together like a puzzle piece. I'm like, I don't like puzzles. I don't like puzzles, <laughs> so I can't do that. But my best advice is for you, if you have written any, even just like a synopsis or a blurb about your ideas, just kind of get them all together, read through them, and just kind of close your eyes and imagine in your head, and one of them is going to say, write me, write me, try me, and then try that one. And if that doesn't work, then go back a few days later, calm your mind, close your eyes, and try again, because those characters, the ones that have to be written right now, they're going to control you, like we've been talking about, and you just got to find the right one. So I'm glad that you're writing blurbs, though. So that's good. At least you have your ideas jotted down. Okay, I think our young zombie also has a question here, but and and it's going to conclude uh, the panel. Um, after you've finished answering her question, if you wouldn't mind, if you have any additional words of advice or some words of motivation for all the young zombies or creative types out there who want to pursue these tracks. What was your question, honey? Um, did you ever have a goal for, or have you ever been on TV for your work? Okay, what kind of uh, 
publicity have you had for your work? Um. Yeah, um, OzCon and MaxCon. Um, the thing that I'm probably the worst at is uh, self-promoting. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I find it easier to promote other people's stuff than I do to promote my own stuff. And, um, but then other people are like, well, I don't know why you have such a problem. And it gets really, it's really cool and awesome. Like, yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't. I, I really hate bragging about myself, and it's like I feel like such a uh, when I start talking about it. Sometimes I can won't stop talking about it once I get going, and then I feel like I'm monopolizing the conversation and being a an a hole or something. And I really I don't I don't like to brag about myself that much. So that that really helps in the self promotion part department. So <laughs> anyway. I myself have never been on television for my work, but my work has been on television a few times. Uh, the first time we were installing a life-size dinosaur show in, I think, the Botanical Garden in Omaha, Nebraska, and we just finished installing the last life-size 30-foot uh, sauropod, I think it was, and I was painting on it, and they said, okay, the, the local news people are coming here, you know, they're gonna start filming, I'm like, oh, awesome, you know, first time my mom gets to see me on TV. And as soon as I finished painting, the, okay, now get away from the dinosaurs so when you start filming. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, people. And then, uh, man, about one time per year, uh, Fox 2 News has asked if I would come up with some of my creatures, and usually as part of a book tour, whatever one of the clients, you know, when they get on TV, they usually take one of my promotional pieces, and then I get asked to come on the television. And the last time, actually, I just turned them down a couple weeks ago. I'm not, I don't want to be on TV. I'm fine with my creatures being on TV. But uh, the second time they asked, uh, someone I guess committed me to it, and so their graphic designer at this TV station, both Kendall R. Hart, a uh, sculptor, I didn't, you know, I told somebody else at the station, like, I'm not going to show up, I'm busy, and I sent the creature, they filmed it with Tim Azell, and there was this eight-foot zombie creature I made, and a different friend of mine filled it, who's an illustrator, Gary Cassell, who used to live in Springfield, Missouri. It worked for IDW Comics. Anyway, so they interviewed him, and my graphic got put up over his face, so he was labeled as Kendall Hart Sculptor, so technically I've been on TV. <laughs> Social media is your best friend when you're creative, even if you don't want it to be. That's what my agent has said, so I've had to learn a lot about social media advertisement, because everybody is on Facebook or Twitter. Um, I have been on my local television station. I don't know if that really counts. I've been on the radio and the newspaper several times, and I also am starting to do conventions. This is my second one doing a panel. My first one selling things, so yay MaxCon for being my first sale convention, and hopefully there will be more to come. But I would like to be on television, that's awesome. I also do uh, YouTube videos, because everybody has YouTube, apparently. And I also, like I said, I do voices for a web show, so that gives me some links, because I'm doing a Pikachu voice dueling with Seto Kaiba, and people are like, who's doing those voices? And oh, she actually writes books. Oh, she's not really Pikachu. I'm like, oh, sorry. But that's good advertisement, I guess, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we're gonna conclude there. Thank you for staying and listening. Thank you, panelists. Um, please feel free to go by their tables, talk to them, ask them all the questions you have, and um, have a nice day, thank you.